Imagine making a phone call without a SIM card, without airtime, and without any mobile network. Sounds like a scene from a sci-fi movie, right? But this isn't fiction. This is real. And it's happening right here in Africa, thanks to a young inventor from Namibia. His name is Simon Petros. And he's about to change the future of communication across the continent. At just 29 years old, Simon Petros is challenging everything we thought we knew about technology. In a world dominated by global telecom monopolies and expensive infrastructure, this young African inventor has built a device that makes communication possible even where there's no network, no signal, nothing but raw ingenuity. His groundbreaking invention is more than just a device. It's a solution to a problem that affects millions of Africans, especially in rural communities left behind by mainstream technology. Simon didn't wait for help. He didn't beg for resources. He built the future with his own hands. Simon's journey began not in a high-tech lab, but in a small town in Namibia, where dreams are often stifled by poverty and a lack of opportunity. But Simon was different. As a boy, he was curious, always pulling apart old radios and discarded electronics to understand how they worked. Armed with nothing but passion, scrap parts, and an unbreakable will, he turned a corner of his home into a makeshift lab. No grunts, no investors, just grit, and what he created would later stun the world. Simon's device doesn't need a SIM card or a mobile tower. Instead, it uses radio frequencies, just like walkie-talkies, but with a twist. His phone can send and receive clear voice signals over long distances, completely independent of conventional telecom infrastructure. It's a two-way radio system reimagined for modern needs. Imagine what that means for remote villages where connectivity is a luxury. Imagine students being able to learn, farmers getting market updates, and families staying connected, even where corporations saw no profit and built no towers. The road wasn't easy. Simon faced failure after failure, burnt circuits, broken prototypes, and criticism from those who didn't believe in him. But he kept going. His breakthrough came when he entered a national science fair. There, in front of skeptics and scientists alike, he demonstrated his device and won first place. Suddenly, the story of the boy from Namibia was everywhere. Engineers and tech professionals who once scoffed at the idea of a network-free phone began to take notice. Some said it wasn't possible until they saw it with their own eyes. What looked like a humble box of wires was, in fact, a powerful tool, proof that African minds can build African solutions. Simon's invention has been hailed as a game changer, not just for Namibia, but for the whole continent. Africa has long struggled with connectivity. Mobile networks don't reach everyone. Airtime is expensive. Infrastructure is either failing or non-existent in many places. But Simon's device bypasses all of that. It offers a path to independence, to real digital inclusion, on Africa's terms. This invention could bring communication to schools, clinics, farms, and homes that have been off the grid for decades. It's not just about talking. It's about accessing opportunity, staying safe, learning, and earning. Simon's story is about more than technology. It's about what's possible when Africans are given the space to innovate. He didn't wait for foreign aid. He didn't need Silicon Valley. He created change from within. And that's what true empowerment looks like. His work stands as a beacon for every young African dreaming of changing the world, but feeling like they don't have enough. Simon is proof that we are enough. That brilliance lives in our villages, in our slums, in our schools, and it just needs a chance to shine. Throughout history, Africa has been a wellspring of ingenuity, creativity, and groundbreaking ideas, many of which were either appropriated, patented by outsiders, or erased from the record altogether. From medicine to agriculture to technology, numerous inventions and innovations born on the continent were either stolen or rebranded by colonial powers and foreign corporations. Here are some powerful examples. 1. 
African iron smelting and steel technology. Long before the Western world industrialized metallurgy, African civilizations were already mastering advanced techniques in iron smelting. The higher people of Tanzania, for instance, developed a method of producing carbon steel using preheated, forced draft furnaces as early as the 1st century CE, centuries before Europe. This technology, which involved precise control of temperatures and chemical processes, was far ahead of its time. Yet much of the credit for early metallurgy has been attributed to European developments, erasing Africa's pioneering role from mainstream history books. 2. Ancient Egyptian Contributions to Medicine and Surgery Ancient Egyptians practiced sophisticated medicine, documented in texts like the Ebers Papyrus and Edwin Smith Papyrus. These works detailed surgical techniques, womb treatment, dentistry, and the use of medicinal plants. Many of these methods influenced Greek and Roman medical traditions, yet the original African origin of these practices is rarely acknowledged. Instead, they were adopted and later credited to the Greek physician Hippocrates, who studied Egyptian medicine. 3. The Ethiopian Tef Grain Tef, a tiny grain native to Ethiopia, is one of the oldest domesticated crops in the world and a staple in Ethiopian cuisine. It is gluten-free, high in protein, and extremely nutritious. In the 2000s, foreign companies sought to patent TAFE-based products without proper benefit-sharing agreements with Ethiopia. The country's intellectual property was essentially exploited, despite TEF being cultivated and protected by Ethiopians for millennia. 4. Mathematical Systems from the Congo and Mali The Ishango bone, discovered near the Nile, and believed to be over 20,000 years old, is thought to be the world's oldest mathematical tool. It shows an understanding of arithmetic, prime numbers, and possibly even lunar calendars. Similarly, the Mali-based Dogon people have long held detailed astronomical knowledge about the Sirius star system, including information that Western scientists only confirmed with modern telescopes. Yet such knowledge was often dismissed as mythology or claimed by Western researchers after colonial contact. 5. African Architecture and Engineering In Zimbabwe, the Great Zimbabwe Ruins are a testament to advanced African engineering, built without mortar using intricate stone stacking techniques. The complex dates back to the 11th century and housed tens of thousands of people. However, Early European settlers refused to believe Africans could have built such a marvel and attributed it to non-African civilizations until archaeological evidence disproved that racist assumption. 6. Agricultural Techniques and Crop Domestication Africans domesticated dozens of crops independently from other regions, sorghum, millet, coffee, yams, and kola nuts among them. These crops were later exported around the world through colonization and exploitation, enriching other nations while Africa's farmers were marginalized. African techniques like intercropping and soil preservation were ignored for decades by European agronomists, only to be reintroduced later under new names and claimed as modern innovations. 7. Traditional healing knowledge exploited by Big Pharma Many pharmaceutical companies have profited from African traditional knowledge without compensating the communities that preserved it. For example, the Hudia cactus, used for centuries by the San people of Southern Africa to suppress appetite during long hunts, was studied by a South African research council and later commercialized by Western drug companies without initial consent or benefit sharing. Only after public pressure was a compensation agreement reached yet it remains a glaring example of biopiracy. These stories are not isolated incidents. They reflect a systemic pattern of erasing African brilliance and repackaging it as Western progress. From colonial theft to intellectual property exploitation, the legacy of stolen African inventions is a painful reminder of how deeply Africa has contributed to global development without recognition or reward. But the tide is turning. A new generation of Africans is reclaiming their heritage 
innovating boldly, and demanding credit for their genius. Africa is not just the birthplace of humanity, it's the birthplace of invention, and it's time the world acknowledged that truth. Simon's story is a call to action. We must support innovation from the ground up. Let's invest in African talent. Let's share stories like Simon's. Let's build labs in our towns, not just offices for foreign NGOs. Let's create networks, not just telecoms, but human networks that elevate each other. Support African inventors, mental young minds. Demand that our leaders create policies that empower grassroots innovators. Simon Petras has shown us the way. It's time we walk it together. Africa's future won't be imported. It will be invented, right here, by people like Simon Petras. Share this story. Tell the world. The revolution isn't coming from the West. It's rising from the dust of Africa's streets, one brilliant mind at a time. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage.